Well, we're here at Rigs and Techniques, and we got Ben Joyce here from Pin Reels, and he gets to play with these toys all the time, and uh, they're just getting more and more uh, complicated and more sophisticated to be able to do the things that we're asking them to do in, in, in harsh environments, salt water especially. Yep. And uh, when you're when you're doing some of the things we're doing with them, you got to take care of them, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, when you really look at these reels over the years, I mean, you go back to some of the early pen reels and there was 30, 40 components in them. Now right. you're looking at, at triple that in a lot of cases. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of technological advances that are going into them. And same with anything mechanical, whether it's a watch, a car, anything, you need a little bit of TLC, um, a little bit of maintenance on them. And it, just remember, a little bit goes a long way. So you, we've tried to break this down into three things, a before and after and a yearly thing. So what, yep. do we, what do we want to do when we're starting out to head, you know, go fishing for the day? Yeah, so the first thing, I'm going to take it even a, a step further back than that, okay. is when you get the reel, just get familiar with it. Spend, you know, a couple minutes. Everybody likes to play with new things when they get them. Yeah, it's always um, a good day when that box comes. Yep, and there's a variety of reels, whether you're talking baitcasters, spinning reels, star drags, we got lever drags on the table. They all feel a little bit different, uh, have some different features on them, and if you get familiar with how they work right out of the box, you're gonna know if something goes wrong as as later on, going on yeah. that it doesn't feel like it did when it was new. I and gotcha. straight out of the box, these are all ready to fish. They come greased. The, the drag is greased, the bearings, the gears are all greased, so you're good to hit the water. So if you compare everything that you're feeling out on the water to when it was brand new, you're gonna know what you gotta do. You're gonna have um, your baseline. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so what, what do we need to do once we get it ready to go? So really, I mean, if you feel your drag system, you know how smooth that's supposed to be, how your drag knob feels, how the handle knobs feel, um, all of that's gonna be your baseline. And then when you get off the water, um, really you want to pay attention to getting all of that salt off of the reel. Salt is the enemy of anything metal. Right. Uh, most reels on the market have metal in them. Uh, if they don't, they're probably not salt water worthy, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, so when you get off the water at the end of the day, the first thing is just going to be a quick rinse. Um, but a rinse is not a rinse and there's proper ways to do it, there's improper ways to do it. <laughs> it's not it. as simple as just spraying it with the hose. Nope, so that's actually a question that we get an awful lot, is how do you properly hose off a reel? Um, when you're looking at the different reels that are on the table, they all have a few different things that you gotta do. The first thing is gonna be you wanna tighten down that drag system. The reason for that is when you actually look in the drag system on a lot of, notably our spinning reels, you can see that we have gaskets on here. In our lever drag reels, there's gaskets in there as well. Even though you get that free spool, they engage when they're under pressure. Mm -hmm. So you wanna tighten down those drags so when you're spraying it off, that water is not getting into that drag system and that's the number one spot where if water gets in there, you're gonna have failures. So what else are we talking about there, that, that crust and build up? How are we getting it off with the, what kind of pressure are you wanting? Yep, so if you take a basic garden hose, water pressure um, is definitely important. You want it to be a, a medium pressure mist, warm water is preferable, and make sure that you pay attention to all these little joints in here, anywhere that something's gonna build up. Mm -hmm. So after we get back, you know, you wanna, you wanna wash them off with a, with a good thing. Do you ever spray them with anything? Yeah, so we actually have a great product for that. It's called the Pen Rod and Reel Cleaner. You can spray it right onto the rod and the reel. If you have excess, wipe that off. Basically, it's a light film coating. It's gonna prevent water from getting into any of those cracks and it's just gonna preserve the life of the reel in the long run. Now, do you use, uh, what kind of water do you use? Are you using hot water, warm water? What's, what hot do you like, water, cold water? Hot, hot or warm water, if you can find it. If not, cold water is going to be perfectly fine. Just make sure that you're not using salt water. <laughs> That's a good idea. Okay, about the yearly, once, once you know, you've made, how many trips do you think is a good time to maybe tear it all apart and go through it? It all depends. If you're a guy fishing 200 days a year, you want to do it definitely more often. Uh, if you're going out once or twice every few months, then you can definitely prolong that as long as you take those few steps when you store them. Um, but when you get to that point where things are starting to feel a little bit wrong, instead of waiting until things really fail on you, get it in for a service. Uh, we have warranty centers all through Texas. We have our center up in Philadelphia, which is where we still make a lot of our reels. And we have a full service center up there that can take care of you. Awesome, man. That's great. Well, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. There you go, fellas. Good job. I learned a lot, guys. Appreciate it. Ben, you might have a job in TV pretty soon. <laughs>